Welcome to Getting Started with App Engine. My name is Lawrence Moroni and I'm a developer advocate at Google for the Cloud Platform. In this video, I'll give you an overview of how you can use App Engine to build cloud scalable apps that are always available thanks to them running on Google's infrastructure for you. The Cloud Platform has a number of different technologies that you can use, and these enable a variety of scenarios, giving you platform as a service as well as infrastructure as a service, as well as just about everything you could ever need to build cloud scalable applications that run on Google's secure, scalable, and available infrastructure. In this video, I will introduce App Engine and describe how you can use App Engine to build applications on top of Google's infrastructure, allowing you to focus on writing your code and not worrying about being able to build the infrastructure to support it should you need to scale in a big way. With App Engine, you can use a variety of popular programming languages in a way that you are familiar with very little changes. You can build cloud scalable apps with Python, PHP or Go using your favorite development tools and a local environment for testing and debugging your app before you deploy it to the cloud. App Engine also supports Java and with an Eclipse plugin you can also develop, test and debug locally before you deploy it to the cloud. When building web or cloud apps there are many considerations but perhaps the most important of these is your data. App Engine gives you a myriad of choices for how you store and retrieve your data and you can pick the ones that suit you. Google Cloud Data Store is a very simple NoSQL data storage scheme. You simply create an object like this and put it into the data store. You can retrieve your object easily in a variety of ways, including a SQL-like language called GQL. Here you can see an example where I have a model that I called Answers, and the answer can have a number of attributes such as the author, city, or country, and I simply just set these attributes and then put my answer into data store. GQL looks a lot like SQL, and as you can see here, I have a query that says select city from answer, where I can just take a look at all of the cities that I have answers for. If your application requires you to store a lot of data and write time is an issue, for example, if you have a lot of concurrent users and you don't want to burn resources writing data, then Google Cloud Data Store is a terrific option. Should you prefer to use a traditional relational database, or if you have an existing database that you'd like to migrate to the cloud, then Google Cloud SQL is built for you. Built upon MySQL, it gives you a powerful, scalable database with full SQL support. Here you can see I'm connecting to MySQL database, and I'm creating a cursor on which I can execute a SQL query. Once I have that query, I can iterate through all the rows of that query and pull out the columns that I want before I finally close the database. Of course, if you need to store your information in something other than a database, for example, files on a file system for pictures or other media, you can use Google Cloud Storage. This is a RESTful service for storing, accessing, and providing controlled access to your data on Google's infrastructure. The Google Cloud Storage client library is available for you to build applications that use cloud storage. Here's an example, and you can see it's just like programming for any kind of file system, where I can open a file, I can write to it and close it, or I can open a file and then seek to a specific location on that file, and of course I can just delete the files that I don't want. If you want to use data with maximum speed, you can do it directly to memory instead of to a data store or database. To empower this, App Engine introduces Memcache, a technology for storing information in shared memory as a key value pair. Here are some examples of using the Memcache APIs. I can add a new value to Memcache by calling the add method. In this, I can specify the key and the value, as well as an optional timeout parameter, after which App Engine will automatically flush the Memcache variable, saving me my resources. I can get a value from memcache by specifying the key that I want to read, or I can also set a value in memcache using the set method. A handy shortcut for numerical values is this increment call. It saves me from getting the value, changing it, and then resetting it. These are just a few simple samples. There's a lot more on using memcache at the developer's site that you'll see at the end of this video. Everything about your app can be managed using the App Engine console. From here, you can see how your app is performing, as well as being able to inspect your data, be it in Data Store, Cloud SQL, or Memcache. Using App Engine, you can take your web applications to the cloud and not have to worry about scale. All web applications have peaks and troughs of usage, and when built on App Engine, you don't have to worry about paying for the compute power that you don't use, and you can rest assured that when you need it, Google's powerful infrastructure is there to power your site. You can learn more about App Engine at developers.google.com. Thank you. And welcome to the cloud.